A man was really bored with life as an ordinary guy, no one knew about him. He robbed a bank, things went wrong, and he killed three people. Yeah. Is he still an ordinary guy that nobody knows about, or has something happened? Something happened for sure. I mean, he's still the same person, but he killed people. And so what's going to happen to him? He's going to go to jail, probably, if he doesn't get away with it. <laughs> so the police are going to hound him because he's done something morally wrong. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the afterlife? Uh, I believe that there's an afterlife. I do not think so. Why do you believe that? Um, I come from an all-Christian family, and um, it's kind of what I was taught and raised to believe. And also, I just feel like I'd rather have an, or I'd rather believe in something rather than believe in nothing. You know? Mm, I'm not sure. You're not sure? Yeah, not you sure. Ever think about death? No, I try not to. <laughs> it's not a pleasant thought, is it? Mm, not the best. You love life? Oh yeah. Are you thankful for it? Yes, very. Who to? Who to? Who am I thankful for? I'm trying to say is, do you believe in God's existence? Oh, like, yeah. Are you thankful to Him for yeah, your life? For sure, yeah. How is your walk with the Lord? Is it really good or is it a little lukewarm? Let's give it 10 out of 10, you're really going great with the Lord. 1 out of 10, there's nothing much happening. Where would you be? Uh, to be honest, probably not too strong. I, I mean, it kind of goes through phases. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm like an 8, sometimes I'm like a 2 because... Um, it comes and it comes and goes in phases, but I, I think it's I lack consistency sometimes. You know. Do you believe in God's existence? Uh, no. So you think all this happened by accident? Beautiful blue sky, the seasons, the fruits, flowers, birds, trees, puppies, kittens. Everything came from nothing. Is that right? No, I believe it came from somewhere. Just not in the fact that there is like a natural creator. A man was really bored with life. As an ordinary guy, no one knew about him. Mm -hmm. He robbed a bank, things went wrong, and he killed three people. Yeah. Is he still an ordinary guy that nobody knows about, or has something happened? Something happened, for sure. I mean, he's still the same person, but he killed people. And so what's going to happen to him? He's going to go to jail, probably, if he doesn't get away with it. <laughs> so the police are going to hound him because he's done something morally wrong. Yeah. Why bother about justice? Why not just say, oh, the guy killed a few people, who cares, survival of the fittest? Why do we care about justice? You give people what they deserve, I guess. I don't know. You give people what they deserve? That's what justice does? I guess. Well, that is a really good definition of justice, getting <laughs> what you deserve. So, what's going to happen to you after you die? Are you going to get what you deserve? Probably. <laughs> where are you going to go, heaven or hell? I don't know. If you died today, where would you go? Uh, I hope I'd go to heaven. But you're not sure? Not 100% not sure, but I think I would. Do you think you're a good person? Yeah, I would say I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I'll, I'll make it to heaven. You're a morally good person? <laughs> I think so. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. Plenty? Uh, I don't lie too much, to be honest with you. <laughs> You've stolen something? Yeah. So you're a lying thief? Yeah. You still think you're a morally good person? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah, I have. Now Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Um, yeah, sure. Hey, no, I haven't. You haven't? No. Are you homosexual? No, I am not. When did you last look at pornography? Probably like in the past week. So Sam, I'm not judging you, but you have to, this is for you, but not I'm for me. I'm an adultist. <laughs> well, you're a lying, thieving, <laughs> blasphemous adult at heart. <laughs> so well, if, God, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to yeah. be innocent or guilty? I would be innocent, probably. Why? Just due to minor. Like, it's just not as big as you think it would be. Like, the white lies aren't, I mean, not necessarily white lies, but sometimes in life you lie just because. Do you know what you're doing? Huh. You're trying to justify yourself. You're trivializing your sins. Yeah. And yet God says sin is so serious, it's punishable by death. God's yeah. given you the death sentence for your sins. It's like that man who shot the three people when he was robbing a bank and yeah. saying, Judge, it was no big deal. They were just ordinary people. This is not serious. Yeah. Judges say, let me show you how serious it is. We're sending you to the electric chair. So Juan, you're in debt to the law. You're not just an ordinary guy among billions. You're in debt to God's law. His wrath abides on you, just like the wrath of the law abides upon a man who's committed a... Uh, a bank robbery and murdered people, they'll chase him, they'll hound him to bring him to justice. The Bible says God will hound you and bring you to justice. He's given you the death sentence already because of your sin. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. So sin is so serious in God's eyes, 
that he's given you the death sentence. You're under capital punishment. But then we don't know until we actually die and everyone's going to well, die. We do. We do. We've got God's word on it. There's no higher authority. The Bible says if you die in your sins, you'll end up damned. And I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to go to hell. So I better stop lying. That won't help you. No, that won't help you. <laughs> so what, the, what, then what are you trying then what are, then what are you want to say you need God's mercy because God will exactly. forgive you and cleanse you and wash away those sins in an instant because yeah. Jesus took the punishment for them on the cross. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. So, but what's the difference between doing all those things wrong in your last day and then you're saying, oh, okay, let me, let me just go back to God and ask for forgiveness on my last day before I die. And then you die and you ask for forgiveness before you die and then you're fine, right? No, not right. That'd be a dumb thing to do because God could kill you just before you... But just before you, just before you decide. <laughs> you know, he did that with a guy in Genesis chapter 38. He didn't like what a man did sexually, and it says, therefore the Lord killed him. Yeah. So we're talking serious business. Jesus yeah. said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it's better to enter heaven without an eye than go to hell with both your eyes. <laughs> man, sin, man, this your life is so precious. Yeah. Don't, don't throw it away by oh, yeah. serving sin. Why I wasn't scared of death is because I'm, um, I see it as leaving something uh, behind when you die and then even if you die if you go to hell or you know wherever the other place is um, you would leave something good behind like kids family and then you know it all depends how the world is going to be at that point you know lots of things are changing well you can thank God that you left family behind God gave you the ability to reproduce after your own kind he gave you the ability to have sex and enjoy the pleasures of sex and so you can have your own children because God gave you that ability now, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? Based on what the Bible says, kind of, he, he had to die for everyone's sins. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Jesus paid the fine. Yeah. That's why he said, it is finished just before he died. In other words, the debt has been paid. Sam, if you're in court and someone pays your fine, even though you're guilty, a judge can let you go because someone else paid the fine. And he can do that which is legal. He can say... Sam, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. And you can do that, which is legal, because someone paid the fine. Yeah. Well, God can dismiss your case, take death off you, save you from hell, because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood. Yeah. Understand that? Yeah, I, I get that. And he can do that, which is legal towards you, because Christ paid the fine and fulfilled God's law. And then he rose from the dead, defeated death, and now God offers you everlasting life as a free gift upon your repentance and faith in Jesus. At the moment you're serving money, the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. You'll either love one and hate the other, or hate one and love the other. So you either love God or love money. You'll either have faith in God or have faith in money as your future provider. As a human, as a basically an animal that we are, we need to survive. And if that's basically the best way to survive out there, you know, like um, survival of the fittest, then that's basically how I take it. You just well, gotta me, survive in this world that we live in. Let me answer that question. At the moment, you're not fit to survive. You're going to die. But yeah. God will make you fit to survive by forgiving your sins and granting you everlasting life. And by the way, you're not a beast. You're not a primate. You're not an animal. You're made in the image of God with a sense of right and wrong and a, and a responsibility to Him for your sins. And He's offering you everlasting life as a free gift. Whoops, time is going. Yeah, it's going for all of us. So please think about this. Will you think about what we talked about today? I, I think of the possibility that everyone might die, you know, at any moment, at, it, at any second. Like, I'm a firm believer of that. Okay, I'm pleased you are because Jesus spoke of a man that was so rich he built bigger barns to put his goods in and he says, I'm going to take it easy from now on. And Jesus said, God said to him, you fool, tonight your soul is required of you and who will have those things that you've, that you've saved? So, so is he that is not rich towards God. So think about it with that attitude. You got a Bible at home? Uh, yeah, I don't read though. I don't read any books. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's too boring. I, don't, I never sit down and just read, you know. A man was very rich, he was on a ship, the ship began to sink, he had a gold uh, belt around him, a belt filled with gold, a money belt, and it weighed 40 pounds, so packed with gold. But when he fell in the water, he wouldn't take it off, because he, because he so loved it, so it took him to his death. Yeah. And sin will do that to you, we so love it, it's so pleasurable, pornography, fornication, lying, stealing, we love darkness. Yeah. But it'll take you to hell, so it's not worth it, and the moment you repent and trust in Christ, God will give you a new heart. So you love righteousness. That's yeah. what a Christian is, someone who loves that which is right. And that's a miracle yeah. for a sin-loving sinner. Is this making sense? It does. It makes sense. Are you going to think about what we talked about? For sure. Do you have a Bible at home? 
I do, but I don't remember the last time it was moved. Please dust it off. Man, it's God's love letter to you. Yeah, dust it off. It's God's love letter to you, and don't neglect your eternal salvation. There's nothing more important. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything else will be added to you. Sam, you've been a good sport. I can I give you some literature? Hey, thanks for listening to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. It means a lot. Thank you. This is the Evidence Study Bible. We can hardly keep it in stock. It's everything you've ever wanted to know about apologetics and reaching the lost, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. It will arm you with practical training on evolution, atheism, the teachings of Mormons, Hindus, Muslims, and Jehovah's Witnesses, and much more, including how to effectively, lovingly, and logically share the truth of the gospel. You'll find that it's hundreds of inspiring quotes from renowned Christian leaders and its practical tips on defending the faith will be a great encouragement. The Evidence Study Bible is available at livingwaters.com. And by the way, there's a special going on at the moment. Buy two, and when you put a third one in your cart, that third one will be free. Go to livingwaters.com, click on Store, Books, and then the Evidence Study Bible.